Imagine a world flipped on its head where women are the ones with their fingers on the buttons of raw, unstoppable force. That's the electrifying premise of Naomi Alderman's novel, The Power. But what if we looked at this world through a different lens, one that's all about the roots of our behavior? Welcome to the intriguing world of evolutionary psychology, the science that explores how the ancient echoes of our past shape our actions today. Now think about this. What happens to societies when the traditional balances are suddenly and dramatically reversed? The power isn't just a story, it's a thought experiment that lets us ask big questions about sex, control, and the wild dance of evolution that twirls on and inside each of us. Today, we're not just talking about a book. We're unraveling a radical viewpoint on what might happen if millennia of gendered expectations were reversed in a spark of electric change. So stay with us as we explore the power and try to understand how evolutionary psychology might shed light on the stunning tale of role reversal. It's not just about who holds the power, it's about why and for how long. Let's turn the page. In our world, power is often a game of physical might, social status, and sometimes fear. But in the power, it's all that and a shocking twist of nature. And when we look at the story through the eyes of evolutionary psychology, we see a map of human nature that's as old as the hills we once lived on. A map that shows us how the struggle for survival might just be the hidden script of this novel. Are you ready to see the power in a whole new light? Let's get started. What is evolutionary psychology? It's a way of thinking about how the human mind has been shaped by the need to survive and reproduce over thousands of years. Like animals adapting to their environment, our brains develop to help us navigate a world full of challenges and opportunities. Now, why does it matter when we're looking at human behavior? Because it tells us a lot about why we might act the way we do in social groups, in our private lives, and when we're faced with choices that could change everything. It's like having a backdrop that helps explain the drama of human interaction. When it comes to sex and power, evolutionary psychology offers an interesting script. It suggests that many of the roles men and women play, from nurturing children to competing for resources, have been influenced by what was most likely to keep our ancestors alive and ensure their children thrived. Over countless generations, these roles became part of our social fabric. And gender roles? Well, they didn't just pop out of nowhere. They've been molded like clay over time by the survival game. Our ancestors faced different pressures, and so they adapted differently. For example, in many species, males often compete for the attention of females. Think of peacocks and their feathers. In humans, this played out over our history in various complex ways, influencing how men and women interact today. So as we move forward, keep this in mind. Every character's decision the power struggles, and shifting dynamics in the power can all be looked at through this fascinating evolutionary lens. Could it be that our history as survivors on this planet is whispering in the background of Alderman's narrative? Let's keep exploring. In the power, the world as we know it is turned upside down. Suddenly, women have a formidable new ability, and with it, the tables are turned. Traditional gender roles are not just challenged, they're rewritten. Men find themselves navigating a world where they're no longer the default leaders, and women are stepping into roles of protectors and decision makers. It's a complete role reversal. It doesn't matter that she shouldn't, that she never would, but what matters is that she could if she wanted. This line from The Power encapsulates Roxy's story. Roxy, a character who was already toughened by her upbringing, embodies aggression when she inherits this new ability. Her journey from the shadows of her father's world to wielding power in her own right is a stark illustration of how aggression can shift the balance of power. So what does evolutionary psychology have to say about Roxy's switch and others in the novel? It suggests that power dynamics and who controls resources in a society aren't set in stone. They can change depending on who has the upper hand, or in this case, the electric charge. This kind of power shift could lead to a completely different social order reshaping everything from family units to government structures. But let's zoom out for a moment and look at this idea from a broader evolutionary angle. Historically, being the dominant group often meant having first dibs on food, territory, and mates. And if women are suddenly the ones with the literal power at their fingertips, how does that change the game? 
it flips the script of evolutionary competition and mate selection. It's no longer about physical strength or even social cunning. Now it's about who can wield this new power more effectively. And here's where it gets even more interesting. If women become the dominant force, how does that affect cooperation, competition, and the balance of society? Could it lead to greater stability or would it just be a new kind of conflict? The power doesn't just give us a what-if scenario. It offers a canvas to reimagine the very foundations of society from an evolutionary point of view. Let's talk about how we choose our mates, not just us, but in the animal kingdom too. This is what scientists call sexual selection, and it's a part of evolutionary psychology. It's the idea that certain traits become more common because they're attractive to the opposite sex. Think of the peacock's tail. It's big, it's bright, and it's all about getting attention. Now, the power tosses a lightning bolt right into the middle of this theory. In the book, women aren't just choosing mates based on traits like strength or status. They're the ones with a new intimidating trait, power. This upends traditional theories of aggression and mating. Usually we think of males as more aggressive, competing for the attention of females. But if women are the ones with the literal firepower, how does that change things? Now, returning to Roxy's display of force, that is a trait that in the wild would likely attract mates. And in the society that Alderman creates, her aggression becomes a tool for both protection and attraction reshaping the novel's love landscape. And in the novel, we see that aggression isn't about physical confrontations. It's also about the ability to control resources and protect oneself and one's family. So if females become more aggressive protectors, does that make them more desirable mates? It's a question that turns the typical narrative on its head. And it's not just about aggression, it's about attraction too. If the roles are reversed and women are the protectors and providers, then what happens to the qualities that are seen as attractive? Do they change as well? The power challenges us to rethink what traits are valued in a mate when the traditional power dynamics are flipped. Relationship dynamics in the power, they're a dance with evolutionary rules. In the book, we see that the electric power could be a trait that's sexually selected for, but it's more complex than just being about attraction. It's about survival, alliances, and power plays. And as we read, we can't help but wonder how would our deeply ingrained strategies for mate selection shift in a world where the gender with the power to intimidate and control resources isn't what we've historically seen. In the power, the dance of attraction and competition is choreographed with a whole new rhythm. When women hold this extraordinary power, it forces everyone to adapt to their steps. The norms of what's attractive, who's choosing, and who's competing, competing are all rewritten. As the characters go through this electrifying new world, their relationships and strategies for finding a mate reflect these upheavals. We're left with a provocative question. In a world where the usual rules of aggression and traction are rewritten, what new forms of intricacy emerge? How do people adapt their behaviors in the quest for companionship and continuity? And what can this reveal about our own world where the balance of power isn't determined by volts and currents, but by something equally charged? In the world we know, social hierarchies are everywhere. They're the invisible ladders we all climb at work and school, even in our social circles. But where do they come from? Evolutionary psychology sheds light on this by suggesting that hierarchies are rooted in our survival instincts. They helped our ancestors create order, establish roles, and work together more effectively. So what happens in the power when women suddenly gain a new physical dominance? The old hierarchies, hierarchies don't just crumble. They are rebuilt with women at the top. This is not just about who is stronger. It's about who controls the resources, the decision-making, and the future of societies in the novel. When women in Moldova transform their country into Bessabra, they're not just forming a nation, they're forging an alliance. This act of unity is evolutionary strategy in motion, a collective approach to survival and dominance. And as Alderman writes, the day of the girls has come and it will last for a long time. The new hierarchies that form in Alderman's world are multiplex. With women in charge, we see shifts in how characters cooperate and conflict with one another. In real life, group survival often depends on working together, pooling resources, protecting each other, and sometimes making peace with rivals. 
the power shows us a world where these strategies are put to the test under a new order. The cooperation we witness among women in the book reflects an evolutionary strategy we've seen throughout history. Alliances form for mutual benefit and protection. Have you ever seen Survivor? But conflict is never far behind. As new leaders rise, they must navigate the challenges that come with power. Challenges that can lead to new kinds of conflict within and between groups. When the script is flipped and women lead the pack, the power asks us to reconsider what we thought we knew about social structures. It's like watching a game where all the rules have changed mid-play. Suddenly, players who were once on the sidelines are calling the shots, creating new alliances and facing off against unexpected opponents. But even with the seismic shift, some things remain constant. The need for cooperation, for forming bonds and alliances, is still key to survival, just as it was for our ancestors. Alderman's characters are playing the age-old game of alliance and rivalry, but the terms have been shuffled. And the teams. Evolution is often thought of as a slow and steady march through time. But what if change happens really fast, really fast? This kind of speedy shift is called rapid evolutionary change, and while it's rare, it's a hot topic among scientists. It's the idea that significant changes can happen in a fleeting period, especially when the pressure's high, like a sudden change in the environment. In the power, this rapid change comes from women developing a physical advantage that reshuffles the social deck. It's not over a millennia, it's almost overnight. How do people adapt to such a shock? The novel goes into this, showing us the ripple effects of the new power. Societies must adapt quickly to the women who can now control, intimidate, and dominate previously unheard of in human history. These sudden shifts bring about massive psychological and sociological effects. Imagine the mental turnaround required when the once less empowered gender becomes the most powerful. It's a mental game as much as a physical one. Fear, empowerment, resentment, and all, all mix creating a psychological cocktail that's explosive and, in the power, quite literal. For society, these shifts mean rethinking roles, norms, and even laws. It's not just about adapting to who has the power, but also how that power is used or abused. The new evolutionary advantage in the book leads to a reevaluation of ethics, governance, and justice. Adaptation is a dance between the possible and the necessary, and the power cranks up the tempo. It asks us to imagine a world where the evolutionary advantage is flipped in an instant. Men and women alike scramble to find their footing in this unfamiliar dance, one with steps that are unfamiliar and sometimes unnerving. What does it do to a person, to a community, when the established norms are turned on their head? How does one navigate a world where the power you once took for granted is now a threat? The power doesn't just tell a story. It asks us to confront these very real questions. And as we consider the novel's portrayal of rapid change, we're also invited to reflect on our own capacity for adaptation. When the ground beneath us shifts, how do we stand up? When the rules change, how do we rewrite our own? Have you ever caught a tune that you just can't stop humming or a catchphrase that sticks in your mind? That's a bit like how memetics works. It's the study of how ideas, behaviors, and cultural trends spread like genes. For culture. And just as genes do, these memes, not the ones you chuckle or cringe at on social media, evolve as they pass from person to person. In The Power, one example of memetics, the spread of cultural information and ideas akin to the transmission of genes, is the way the knowledge of the power itself proliferates among the women. Once a few women discover the ability to produce electrical shocks, the knowledge of how to awaken and use this power spreads rapidly across the globe. This is not just a biological awakening, but also a cultural one, as the idea of the power becomes a viral concept that women share, learn about, and teach to others. Remember when young girls start to awaken this ability in older women and it becomes a widespread phenomenon? The act of awakening isn't just a biological process, it's laden with cultural significance and becomes part of the shared female experience. And this action becomes a meme in the truest sense, a unit of cultural transmission that is replicated and passed on from one individual to another, altering social norms and expectations as it spreads. 
all over the world, she is waking up other women. It's like a chain reaction spreading out of control. Some of them must be waking up others in turn because there are reports now from places she's never been. The novel vividly portrays this spread of new norms. Women worldwide learn to wield their power, changing not just their position in society, but also how society operates. And this ripple effect is the essence of mimetics. As the idea of powerful women takes hold, it transforms everything from individual identities to global politics. And these memes about gender and power don't just add to the culture, they change it. And in the world of the book, they evolve quickly, outpacing the slow genetic changes we typically think of in evolution. This is cultural evolution and overdrive, and it leaves a lasting imprint on the world of the power. Mimetics shows us how quickly a powerful idea can take root and grow, and in the power of the idea of a world where women are in charge spreads at lightning speed. It's not just a change in physical power, it's a shift in the cultural DNA. And this is how cultural evolution overtakes the slow pace of biological change. Ideas about strength, leadership, and even morality evolve to fit the new reality. Gender norms, which once seemed set in stone, are rewritten in the blink of an eye. Now, Looking at literature through the lens of evolutionary psychology can be eye-opening, but it's not without its critics. Some say this approach is too simplistic, reducing human culture and literature to just survival and reproduction. Others argue it can reinforce stereotypes, especially about gender roles, making it seem as if certain social structures are hardwired rather than socially constructed. And in the power, applying evolutionary psychology might lead us to view the new dynamics as natural and inevitable. But critics would urge us to look beyond biology, to the entanglements of culture, history, and individual experience. They point out that human societies are not shaped by evolutionary pressures alone. Human agency, choice, and a wide array of social factors play a massive role in our development. And these counterarguments to the evolutionary psychology interpretation of the power suggests that the novel's scenario is more about questioning and exploring societal constructs than about natural selection or inherent traits. So, while evolutionary psychology provides a compelling framework for understanding some aspects of the power, it's important to remember the broader picture. Humans are storytellers, lawmakers, dreamers, and rebels, as much as we are survivors and reproducers. And the power is rich with themes that transcend evolutionary basics. It challenges us to think about morality, justice, and the very fabric of society, things that can't neatly be explained by evolutionary psychology alone. When we interpret literature or even look at society through a single lens, we risk missing out on the diversity and complexity of perspectives that make us who we are. The power isn't about what changes when women have a new biological edge. It's about how we understand power, control, and change itself. And as we reach the end of our exploration, let's take a moment to reflect. We've wandered through the fascinating landscapes of evolutionary psychology and examined how it cast a unique light on the power by Naomi Alderman. From the role of sex and power dynamics to the upheaval and spread of cultural memes, we've considered how the scientific perspective can inform our reading of the novel. But the conversation doesn't end here. Think about how gender and power dynamics play out in your own experiences. What if the world changed as it does in Alderman's vision? How do these ideas resonate with you? And what questions do they raise about the society we live in and the future we're heading towards? So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Jump into the comments and share your take on the interplay of gender, power, and evolution, because your insights are the sparks that can keep this conversation going. And that's a wrap on our journey through the power with the lens of evolutionary psychology. And if this conversation sparked your interest, give the video a thumbs up. Share it with some friends who love reading books and ideas. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to join our community of curious minds. We've got plenty more to talk about. So if you're hungry for more discussions like this one, stay tuned. We might just take a closer look at how other literary works handle these themes. Ta-ta.